Hey, I don't give a fuck what Kamala Harris done did or ain't did. I'm voting for Kamala Harris. Straight up, because she black. And you should too. I don't care. Like, well, shit, if it don't work out, it don't work out. But get what? We we tried to stick together for one time, goddamn shit. But let her prove us wrong. Right. You know what I'm saying? Vote for her, and then we see what's going on. Because y'all damn sure ain't... I don't even know what they're listening to when they hear Trump. And Trump ain't did nothing for us. But bring us hell. If you vote for Trump, you vote for your race to get annihilated. Like, he already ready to give police total immunity, you know what I'm saying, to to take us out. You know what I'm saying? Like, divided. Black people divided because we just love to see somebody in power not have power. You know what I'm saying? Because we can't have it. Our dreams, some of our dreams don't go that far. You know what I'm saying? We can't think that far, so we asking why you get to have that. You know what I'm saying? Why you get to, instead of saying, let's put the people in position. Okay. So... Saying, you know, vote for Kamala because she's black. Put her in position. Put the black people in position. Because, you know, at times, black people are selfish and they want their own power. So what do you guys have to say for that? And it's one mic, you know, anybody gets popcorn style. Anybody can jump in and start talking. Okay, well, I'll start. Hi, I'm Sharon. Uh, I don't know that gentleman that was just speaking, but... Obviously, that came from, and I no um, insult to him, but that was an ignorant comment. Uh, you don't vote for anybody because of their color. Uh, we vote because of the policies that affect our families and our families' lives. And so I have many policies that identify with what her agenda is that will advance my uh, personal family life, my financial life. And um, and not only that, but being a woman of color and being able to feel comfortable with going in and out and not having, you know, race be an issue. Uh, okay. I think that that helps me. I, I, I didn't understand anything that he said that would advance her cause or anyone else for that matter. He didn't Do get it. Do share what what are some of these things that um that you think will help you or help okay. your family? Seven hundred fifty dollars. Uh, I'm I'm not familiar with the seven hundred and fifty dollars. I'm sorry. <laughs> what is that? Is that something that is going to advance me? Because seven hundred fifty dollars is that what you're saying? Is it Sharon or is it? I'm sorry. What? You can call me Sharon. That's that's that sounds good. I like how you, I like that. All right, Sharon. that's my new no, name. No, listen, I got a lot of respect for you. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Can you okay. share those, some of those with me? I'm Sharon. Oh, yeah. No, I like. Yeah, some people call me Sharon, so I like. I'm gonna go with Sharon. That, that'll bring me up into you know with the young people. <laughs> uh, well, for one thing, I have a 401k, so it's very important to me that my financial stability and growth. Uh, continues on the trajectory that it is on now because it is growing. And uh, under Trump, uh, it, obviously, I will say that, you know, I will give, I will be fair and say that uh, the coronavirus did affect not only our country, but every nation pretty much. So we can't just blame everything on the economy on him when there was issues that would uh, cause that to happen. But that's one of the things, the inflation rate. If you look at the inflation rate too, if, if we've talked about my 401k and how I feel like uh, some of the energy um, policies that they've uh, put in place to help our economy get better with, um, let's say the- well, hold, on, hold, on, hold on, Sharon, let's, let's, sure. let's start with the first one. Okay. What do you mean your 401k? Well, a financial. A no, no, no. I understand what a, oh, I understand what four hundred one k is. I'm trying to understand how that how you are affected by a four hundred one k. How is that relevant to um, Kamala Harris becoming president? Well, the policies that they put in place. I mean, if if the financial uh, economy is doing well and people are actually their uh, economy, their have, their portfolios are growing because of some of the policies that have been put in place, then that like will like, like what policy? energy, like for energy, for instance, um, where we weren't uh, doing a uh, drilling for gas. Now we're drilling for gas. 
And so those those energy policies, we're selling some of those um, um, what is, um, the gas over to Europe and some of the other countries. And that's also helping our economy stay strong. No, I think you're not- confused. I think it was it's, you got it backwards. Um, under Trump, when he handed over the economy, inflation was at one point two percent during the Biden administration. Biden Harris administration, 2021, 2022, and 2023, uh, inflation exploded to over 20 something percent, about 23 percent total. Um, at times throughout throughout their administration, inflation was at nine and 10 percent, depending on where you lived and what your lifestyle was, and that including including um, groceries, gas, um, all of that. As a matter of fact, uh, she flip flopped on fracking. And that's the reason that she flopped is because she's trying to appeal to voters in Pennsylvania where fracking is a huge industry. And so in 2019, when she was uh, running in her primary and she was at the debate, she was at a CNN panel and she said that she wouldn't do fracking. Uh, But now she's realized that the people in Pennsylvania is against not fracking because they actually want the jobs and they actually want energy prices lower. And so she's changed her position and her policy with regard to that. And so if you look at some of the Biden administration's policies and what they've done as far as killing pipelines and oil and all of that, they're actually against drilling. And if you look at the the infrastructure deal and, and the Green New Deal that they're trying to push through, it actually is the opposite of what you're advocating for. They're trying to push through EVs, which then kills jobs and then ultimately a 401k suffers. But if you look at the time frame by which Trump was in it in office from 2016 through 2020, your 401k actually should have exploded. So I don't know if you if you realize that the points that you're arguing is actually in favor of Trump. It's not in favor of Kamala Harris. Well, actually, I'm looking at I'm looking at the inflation rates and and looking at when Trump left office in 2021, inflation rate was seven percent. So no, no, under no, no, Biden no, no, no. Today, when Trump handed over, it's a fact. You should relook at your facts. No, it is a fact Trump because handed over. I, I don't know where you got your facts, but where did you get your facts that it was? Too I, I, I'll it was cite too my sources. Okay, and I will too. I have, but I don't want to. Was not a seven percent at all. Okay. Well, it was seven percent in twenty twenty one, and now it's two point four today. So that's uh, well over a five point spread. Give me a so, second. And it's and, and you're looking at two point four as of two thousand twenty four. Again, no, you, got, at, you, got 20, to whole, you, have, you have to take the whole three and a half years in, 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 in account. So well, I'm not sure if everybody absolutely. understands. I have the chart. Works. I can give you the chart data. So the chart hey, I, data. I teach it every single year. OK. And I watch it and I read it every day because it's very important. According to Investopedia, the average year over year inflation speaking specifically to his entire time in office from 2016 all the way until he left office on the tw- on on January 20th of 2021 his year over year inflation according to investopedia is 1.9% and when he handed it over it was 1.2%. The average year over year inflation it says it right here under under president Donald Trump was 1.9%. Inflation remained low during Trump's presidency and that's why. And if you look at the Harris Biden administration it's saying that it was above 7% on average, and that's considering and taking into account currently them getting inflation down to about three to two percent, right? And, and so, is. 2021 and 2022 and 2023 inflation was almost at 10 percent. And as of right now, it's lower. And so, they've been able to average it out to above six percent as a result of what's happening in 2024. So, I don't know where you're getting your facts from, but you're absolutely wrong. And I don't know where you're getting your, I've watched it's not only that. Uh, okay, it's April. So, real quick, so are we going to sit up here and act like the pandemic was not a factor in the inflation for 2021 when it was 4.7, 2022 it was 8.0 based mm-hmm. on ongoing supply chain issues, the mm-hmm. war um, in Ukraine, the energy prices, 2023 dropped to five, five to six, and in two right now it's currently three to four percent. Absolutely, but let's be clear. So a lot Trump, of the things, a lot Trump, of the things that you're, Trump, ta- you're citing. Pre-COVID, inflation no, 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 no. 1.8, 2022, 
2018, 2.4, 2017. Can we roll back to the Obama administration? Because mm -hmm. we know civics, that last, that last time it rolls over into the next administration, depending on what it is. That's it doesn't. Again, that's why you work. take the entire because four years, man. You go through the whole year and you don't get inaugurated until January of that following. Even if, even if we wanted to qualify, your argument is right. Again, the, not, the things that you cited, it's actually things that were implemented under their administration. So if you want to cite the Ukraine war, that is something that they're supporting. If you want to cite Israel, that's something that they're supporting. If you want to cite the, the amount of money that they're contributing into the migrant crisis, that is something that they that happened under their administration. You cannot blame Trump for the Ukraine war. You can't blame Trump for Israel. You can't blame Trump for the, for the migrant crisis. You can't blame Trump for the cost of, of goods and services, not necessarily with, with regard to logistics, because that literally has, has tapered off a long time ago. But when you see what's happening in some of the policies and the things that they're funding, and if you look at the federal budget, it's absolutely as a direct result of Harris and Biden's administration and their policies as far as what they're doing from a financial perspective. On top of and it, shows no sign from now. the Trump administration. Hold on, hold on. Give, me, give me a second. What happened was they they literally they literally <laughs> this is so simple. They forced the Fed, they forced the Fed, that it came over from the Trump administration. Is a direct result of them a printing. Y'all never wanted this. Oh, listen, listen, listen. Yeah. This is this is a basic economics course. Right. This, this it's a direct, it's a direct result. It's a direct result of them printing more money. And it's also a direct result of them raising interest rates and causing the cost of your lifestyle to go up. So it's not just logistics. They literally raise rates all the way, all the way up to almost 7%. And so you couldn't buy a home. You couldn't get money. You couldn't borrow money. The cost of living went up because your credit card fees went up. And every single thing that, that caused you to spend money, it costs you more to do so because it's literally a trickle up effect. And so when because they, of when COVID. They, when they, because no, of raising COVID. Rate, raising because of rate, COVID. They lower that rates because of COVID. That's that's that money is that. so cheap. No, that is been analyzed wrong. research and documented. She's wrong. Taken away from Don't you realize that they that lower rates? I work for the bank. In the inflation. I work for the bank. They that's lower great. rates. They that's lower great. rates. They lower that's rates great. because of COVID. But COVID that's why everybody refinanced. That's why COVID everybody refinanced. Everybody the went in and they refinanced rate. their loans and everybody went and overpaid for their houses because they lowered rates that's in order to keep went, it. Got it. Like, okay. Okay. Well, 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 it doesn't listen. qualify you for you to You're not wrong. in a mix. You're wrong. COVID they lowered rates during COVID. They literally lowered rates during COVID. They didn't raise rates. Would we acknowledge that there was global inflation? Absolutely. But, it, but, but wait a minute. Bottom the top we inflation due to COVID. People we're not going to ignore the fact that she's wrong. And Millions whenever she's wrong, died. whenever people she's wrong, back to work. Like let's comment. Whenever say. she's wrong, she fails to admit that she's wrong. They lowered rates during COVID, and that's why everybody refinanced their home. But, but not, do, but not during the entirety of COVID, because rates did go up during COVID as well, right? But that's because you they really? raised rates because inflation shot up because they didn't know what they were doing. That's right, the whole reason why the Fed raised Jamisha's rates. Point, but I think Jamisha's point is, why did inflation shoot up? Well, and first why? of all, we got to acknowledge that they lowered rates during COVID. That's perfectly fine. COVID made, made no, 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 no. You didn't make the statement. She did. I'm aware. But we so can. She needs to acknowledge that she was wrong. I'm not wrong because I said COVID also plays a part in the inflation rate. You want to discredit like it doesn't supply and demand. I'm not negating so other wrong. things, but you guys have to admit so that COVID played a part. It kills you to say it. COVID did not play a part in them. No, it did not. No, it did not. Control alt delete the whole yeah. blueprint to dealing with the economy and dealing with the United States. You. you during you're, something like this you're just you Tell just refuse to acknowledge this you refuse your to acknowledge L leave it up to democrats they will tell you that this administration has done nothing wrong that they didn't cause inflation that they didn't raise rates and they they literally warned us that they were going to raise rates because they didn't know how to they didn't know what they were doing as far as being able to manage the economy effectively which they then which then resulted 
You're shadow boxing, though. Nobody said that. That's literally what she said. Literally what she said. She says that raise rates as a whole. I said you Answer. have to acknowledge that COVID plays a part in the inflation rate in this administration. That is that is the truth. That has been analyzed, researched, and documented. But you don't that know it how it plays a part. The, the, the things that you're using in order to try you to justify your argument no high school is wrong. Up here. You're not talking I'm to sorry? someone that's not educated. You what does it have to do with the fact that you're wrong? I'm not wrong because I, I said you to qualify your education. Hurt. You're wrong. How is that statement wrong? So you're going to sit here and say that COVID at no point plays a part in the inflation during this administration. Never. Nothing about COVID. You can't That's say that. That's not what I said. I'm saying That's it not what I said. Jamisha, COVID was like a blip in the radar. No, There's no, no, other no, no, factors. No, no, no. That's it's, it's, sorry, it's literally not, not what I said. Dying is not a blip. The whole That's country not what I said. COVID. And not only the country, but uh, other nations globally. as well. I mean, if you look globally. at our at globally, exactly. If you look at how we're performing in terms of inflation, the uh, how we have bounced back from uh, the job rates and everything else, from That's a nation right. standpoint, we are one of the leaders. And 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 oh, and yeah. you look at UK, you look at all of the other China. We are economically the strongest. So that has something to do with policies that in that last four years to clean up what policies? what has been- like the policies, what policies? Okay, well then, okay, let's go on with, uh, we've, we've talked about the policies. Um, let's no, go haven't. with, oh, okay. We have, well, you haven't have cited one policy to justify your 401k being affected and you literally argued in favor of Trump. You didn't argue in favor of Kamala Harris. No, I did not. I, I explained where they, uh, the course of the graph in terms of when inflation went down and, and those inflation impacts are, are my growth of my uh, 401k and my savings account. So you can't, you, you tell do me. Do you know why, do you know why your savings, is. do you know why your savings account is affected in a positive way? Do you even know why? Because when they I raise interest rates, it's, a, it's the literal opposite. So, for example, the because money is more expensive. The bank account is so low, it doesn't hardly even affect a savings account. Listen, it ain't man, even listen, worth putting your money the whole into reason, savings account. The whole reason why they have high yield savings accounts. let's be real about that. The, the whole reason why they have high yield savings accounts is because the interest rates are so high. Literally, other people's pain it helps people that have savings accounts, which you shouldn't even have a savings a savings account at all, but it literally really, helps. You, you should have at least three months or more or something in your account in case you do have other issues that come about so that you'll be able to take care of those things. So right, some, for the some form of savings. Okay. So, uh, but literally you all cited no policies, but it's okay. Okay. Well, can you give me a policy? For Kamala Harris? No, I don't I, think anybody can give a policy for Kamala. Oh, really? My point is, is that everything that you're arguing for, you're arguing for as it relates to how Trump affected the, com uh, the economy in a positive way. Nobody, literally nobody is doing better. Well, at least nobody that I know. Nobody well, we know Trump is no, because no he's regular middle Nikki class. Online to try to get himself back into. But, uh, but his supporters, money is going toward Things, wait a minute. The money that people are sending in for his um, uh, um, election is going mm -hmm. towards some of his legal fees. So he's obviously not doing as well in this economy either. Because mm -hmm. I don't know if you've seen Trump social. It's, you know, the. the, the Trump social? Um, yes, or whatever they call it. <laughs> um, Do it's you know not what the valuation either. of true social is? Uh, I'm talking about his platform for his. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah. it's called Truth Social. Yes. Okay, Trump Social. I know I knew what it was called, but I call it Trump Social. But it's okay. Uh, so you know the, the point that I'm is? just making is, even his he's not even doing well. hasn't been and hasn't been doing well. Everything that that man has touched has basically gone down. So I, you look at his school that he had, uh, his college or uh, whatever you called it uh a lot of his buildings are uh, a lot of those are now uh going down i mean obviously what? if this is who we're looking for 
as far as someone who is economically going to put us back into uh, uh, an economy that is thriving, I can't see that when his own things that he is involved, directly involved in, are not doing well. So what I don't understand. Talking about? She's basically saying his his record, his past record, is not someone we would want to follow those footsteps. It's not someone we should choose to leave. His valuation in Truth Social was almost $2 billion. What the hell is we talking about? And that was a platform that was launched within the last few years. Do you know how much it's worth now? Do you know, do you know how much it's worth yeah, now? I'm looking at it right now. According to Fortune and Forbes, the valuation of it actually jumped to $200 million over the last two months. Uh, his valuation and his stake is 60%, totaling 114 million shares, and it swelled from $1.4 billion. It swelled from $1.4 billion up as of Wednesday's price. 